Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel and today we're going to be doing some neutral and not so spooky Halloween decor. For this first project, I grabbed these frames from my local thrift store. They were kind of cute as they were, but I did want to dull down the pink flowers a little bit, especially on the smaller oval one. So I just went in with some of my European gold rub and buff and went over all the flowers and the leaves on these frames. Otherwise, for these frames, I just left them the way they were. For the background, I'm going to be using this scrapbook paper that I have. It's a really pretty black floral and script paper. And I'm just actually going to attach this to the backing of the frames. So I'm just using some Mod Podge, doing a light layer on these. And then I will just lay my scrapbook paper on here and press it down nice and firm and make sure there are no bubbles or lines anywhere. Then I just did the exact same on the rectangle frame and once I had these on here then I did go back in and do a nice thick layer of Mod Podge on top of here and once it was dry I just sanded off the edges to get the excess paper off. You can really use any paper background for this but I just thought the darker color was a nice contrast to the little ghost that I'm going to be putting in here. Once those were dry I just popped them back into the frame and then I'm gonna grab some of this white tissue paper that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna be taking one sheet folding that in half and then I'm gonna kind of push my finger up into the center of it in a little spot to make a little ghost and then I'll cut that down and and again just kind of shape it and squish it together to make a little ghosty this one happened to be just a little too big so i just went ahead and trimmed it down just a little bit to fit into this smaller oval frame and again i just kind of squished it and shaped it around until i was happy with it and I'm going in now with some Mod Podge, just a nice light layer so that I can lay this on top of there. Then once I have my ghost laid down, I will go back in with a thicker layer of Mod Podge on top of here. And as you can see, I'm just kind of holding it in place where I want it as I am putting this Mod Podge over top of it. You don't really need to worry about the center part being flat to the back of the frame because this is kind of supposed to look 3D like the little ghost is coming out of it. But just make sure that you get all of the edges down nice and tight against the backing. So for my larger frame, I did the exact same thing, but this time I made my ghost just a little taller. Then just repeated the process of applying the Mod Podge to the background, laying the ghost down, and then Mod Podging over it. Once everything was nice and dry, then I went back in with just a Sharpie marker and made their eyes. And then finally, just to kind of age them up and make the paper not look so new, I went in with some antiquing wax and a small brush and just brushed it over them in random places and kind of blended that in with my finger. For this project, I'm going to be using this large cement pumpkin that I've had for quite a few years now. As you can see by looking at the bottom of it, it was gray when I first bought it. And throughout the years, I just kind of change it up whenever I want to, to go with my decor. As you can see from last year, this was painted a burnt orange and white color. But this year, I figured I would actually just use this more 
in my Halloween decor. So I started out by painting that stem with a small brush and some of my Apple Barrel acrylic paint in the color Burnt Umber. And for the first coat, I wasn't too concerned about getting the paint on the pumpkin because as you can see here, I am gonna go in and paint this entire thing white. So I did two coats over the entire thing and then of course anywhere that I had gotten paint on the stem or vice versa then I just touched it up with a small paintbrush. After it dried completely then I'm going to go in with some of these alphabet stamps that I got from Amazon and some of my archival ink and I just kind of started stamping Halloween themed words all around this pumpkin. As you can see I did try to start out using my acrylic block but since the shape was a little bit lumpy on here it was too difficult so I just went in with each individual letter and just kept stamping my way around this pumpkin to do the first line and then once I have that first line done then I'm just going to continue down to the next line and continue stamping Halloween words all the way around this pumpkin and I'm not sure if you can tell really in the video but some of the words I did a little darker with the ink and then some just a little lighter and this doesn't have to be perfect again it's for Halloween so I just continued all the way down my pumpkin. Then to finish the pumpkin off, I am going in with some of my European Gold Rub and Buff, going over that stem, and then also I ended up using it in between the little crevices on the pumpkin just to age this up a little bit and not make it so new and white. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these sconce shades. I've actually had these in my attic for a little while, and I did have two of them, but I ended up breaking one of them. So I figured why not use it to make a cute little ghost lantern. So I also grabbed this Dollar Tree crystal knob, and then this little wood piece is actually from one of the Dollar Tree little Christmas trees that I removed it from. So I I did end up having to drill down in the hole to make it a little bigger and then I was able to just screw that knob right on top of there. Then I took this entire piece outside and spray painted it with some of my Rust-Oleum Gold spray paint and this ended up fitting perfectly on top of this sconce shade so I just used some gel super glue to attach it. Then to add the little eyes and the mouth on here, I did go in and pre-draw those with a pencil just because this sconce shade had a lot of texture on it and I didn't want to mess it up. So once I had those drawn on with the pencil, then I just went back in with my black chalk paint and a small paintbrush to fill those in. For this project, I went out into my yard and just grabbed a couple of these little sticks. And then I'm also going to be using some of these cinnamon scented little brooms from Dollar Tree. Now for all of these, I did end up unwrapping everything so that I could just make these the way I wanted to. I wanted each of them to be a little bit different. And also I didn't want them to look so uniform. So for this one, I ended up pulling apart those little broom bristles, placing my stick down in there, wrapping it around, and then I'm going to use some twine, wrap this around a couple times, and then tie it at the back. Then like I said, for each of the other ones, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I am unwrapping them how they came from Dollar Tree. And then I'll just kind of move the bristles around to make them each look a little different. I also ended up cutting some of the sticks a little shorter so that each one was 
a varying height just because I want to put these into a vase that I have and kind of do like a witch's broom floral arrangement. And since that was my plan for these, I have these dried flowers that I got from Amazon and I'm just going to pick a few per witch's broom and kind of make each one a little bit different but still similar and then I'm grabbing this gold velvet ribbon that I've had also from Amazon and I'm gonna glue that to the back of my broom and then wrap it around to cover that twine and I think these would be cute just laying around maybe in a few different places around your house in your Halloween fall decor but like I said I have this beautiful milk glass container that I put mine in. For this project, I grabbed one of Dollar Tree's plastic skulls and I'm going to start out by painting this entire thing with some of my Waverly White chalk paint and I ended up just doing two coats. I had this little masquerade mask in my Halloween stuff and even though it's not the color that I would prefer, I wanted to put this on to the skeleton. So since it wasn't exactly the color I wanted, I decided to go in and cover this with two coats of my black chalk paint. I also removed that little elastic band because I'm going to have to end up making this a little smaller to fit the skull. Of course, I didn't want to just leave this mask just plain black. So here I'm just tearing up a couple pieces of this vintage scrapbook paper that I have. And I'm going to take those small little pieces and rip them around all the edges. And then I'll go in with some of my Mod Podge and just start randomly placing these small pieces all over my mask. Then of course for each piece I'll go back in and do a nice thick layer over these pieces. I also just ended up Mod Podging over this entire mask just so everything, the sheen and everything would go together. Then I wanted to make this look just a little less plastic and kind of give it a worn leather look. And also I wanted to blend those edges of that scrapbook paper into the mask. So I'm going Going in with some of my apple barrel paint in the color burnt umber and I'm kind of just dabbing a stenciling brush in some paint and then dabbing a lot of the excess off and just kind of dry brushing this color over the entire mask and it worked really well to give it that worn leather look that I was going for. And as you can kind of see on here, where those little details on here were, there was like glittery pops of detail that I painted over. So I wanted to kind of bring those back out by using some of my European Gold Rub and Buff and just lightly brushing over those. Then, like I said, I cut that little elastic piece down and I'm just going to glue this back to my mask before placing it onto my skull. Now, as you can see, the the mask is a little wider than this Dollar Tree skull so I did end up just putting some hot glue down on those sides and then holding it until it cooled off. And that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.